Yeah, that's right. Thanks to flash cartridges, we can enjoy pretty much any Super Nintendo game on the original hardware. But some of us still enjoy having the games. Nothing wrong with that. The only problem is, a lot of them are really freaking expensive. So I thought I'd put together a video of games that are $10 or less. The resource I'm using is the Video Games Price Charting website, which tracks how much the games go for on eBay. There's a link in the video description. I realize it's not a perfect resource because some of the data gets skewed thanks to lots being sold and shipping costs, but it's really all I have to go by. Well, that and first-hand experience of looking for games myself. Bear in mind, these games aren't all exactly the greatest. Like, you'll never see Lagoon in a top 20 games list, for example. Or a, or a top 50 list, for that matter. But it's still decent enough, especially for its price. I'll start with platformers. Tiny Toon Adventures is a perfectly solid game from Konami, so you know it's decently put together. I've seen this game for as cheap as $5, which would normally imply that it sucks, right? Especially since it's based off a TV show, and those games are almost never good. But Tiny Toon Adventures bucks the trend with solid mechanics and some little gameplay innovations here and there. Next, there's Plock, a very bright and colorful platformer featuring a thing with disembodied fists and feet that he throws at things. He looks kind of spastic, but the controls are actually very precise, which makes this game fun. Phantom 2040 is a nice contrast to Plock, much darker looking and more of an emphasis on exploration and movement. If you like the Super Metroid style of gameplay, then you'd like this game. The only crappy thing about Phantom 2040 is there's no battery save, only a password, which is 48 characters long. Oof. Krusty's Super Funhouse is a simple puzzle platformer. The idea is to lure mice out of Krusty's house into a trap. Okay, the platforming aspect is pretty uninspired, but I did enjoy the puzzle solving. True Lies. Yeah, that's right, based off the Arnold movie. It's rare when you see a movie-based game that's actually decent, especially in the 90s, but this one is shockingly decent. The gameplay is simple, as you can see from the footage here. You make your way around and just blow stuff up, with a variety of weapons and power-ups. Last but not least, there are the Super Star Wars games. All three are solid, playable, and cheap, but Jesus, they are hard as hell. I've never actually beaten any of these games, and I doubt I ever will. Still, they do a great job representing the Star Wars universe, and it's always fun to shoot stuff with a blaster like Han, or use the spinning lightsaber attack with Luke. For shoot 'em ups, Gradius 3 is always cheap. Yeah, it's got some bad slowdown problems, but it's fundamentally sound otherwise, and the power up system is fun. Super Earth Defense Force is another perfectly decent shoot 'em up. Eight different weapons to choose from is a fun feature. The drawback with this game is the lack of checkpoints, making the game annoyingly difficult, but still, for the money, it's perfectly okay. For beat em ups, I'm always going to be partial to Final Fight. I did a review of this one a long while back. It's always super cheap, and it's got such great sound, you want to play it just for the satisfying sound of smashing someone with a huge pipe. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse is another solid beat-em-up game made by Capcom. I really have no idea why this game is so cheap, because it's very good. I like the Mega Man-styled aspect of having a different mutant for each stage, and I like the implementation of Street Fighter-styled controls for each mutant power. Definitely check this one out. Fighting games are always super cheap, so you can afford to stick with the classics like Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Killer Instinct. Simple enough. Same philosophy applies to strategy games as well. Stick with the classics like SimCity and Pilot Wings. But if you're feeling adventurous, check out Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4, Wall of Fire. It's a turn-based strategy game where you apply RPG-styled stats to your officers, ranging from diplomacy to, uh, lightning bolts. There's six scenarios you can play through with tons of customization. Really, it's probably the best turn-based strategy game on the Super Nintendo, and it's super cheap. Puzzle games are always cheap as well. Really, you can't ever go wrong with Tetris Attack, which is a neat twist on the usual Tetris formula, having to rearrange sequences into threes as they scroll up instead of fall down. And then there's Wario's Woods, where you bomb the hell out of monsters. Both function as fun multiplayer games as well. And obviously, sports games are always, always cheap. And there's always about 80 gazillion of them available at any retro gaming store. So I'm just going to mention the same four games that I always do. Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball, NHL 94, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and Tecmo Super Bowl. You can't go wrong with these four. For typical arcade-style racing, there's Top Gear, which is sharp and colorful and does an impressive job of conveying a sense of speed. For combat racing, if you don't want to dole out the money for Mario Kart, then I'd recommend Battle Racers for the Super Famicom. It reminds me a bit of F-Zero, but with power-ups. Granted, it takes a while to actually identify which power-up is which, but it's still a cheap alternative to stuff like Mario Kart. Now, keep in mind this is a different game from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Battle Racers. This is simply Battle Racers for the Super Famicom. Now for adventure games under $10, you gotta venture into some murky territory here. These games are extremely hit and miss, and a good example is Lagoon. 
good graphics and good artwork, and the music is nice, but the story is extremely cliched and pretty boring, and some of the bosses are impossible, especially since the game doesn't let you use magic against them. What? What is that? You have a frustratingly short attack range too, but the game really isn't that terrible, it's average, and for the purposes of this list, I'll recommend it. If you want to do better than average, you're going to have to raise your threshold to at least $15 or $20, so you can include games like Equinox, also known as Solstice 2, if you remember Solstice for the NES. It's a perfectly solid game, albeit a difficult one that's hard to get into at first, but it's your typical adventure fare, walk around and fight stuff, solve puzzles, beat the boss, and rescue whoever. It's got its flaws like the shaky hit detection, but it's pretty good for the price. Similarly with RPGs, all the cheap ones pretty much suck. Your best bet under $10 is going to be Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, but then that game was designed for people who are brand new to the RPG genre, so it's kind of lacking to say the least. The cheapest of the more classic style Super Nintendo RPGs is probably Breath of Fire. That usually goes between $25 and $30. The game is a bit outdated with a crazy amount of random battles, but it's a beautiful looking game and the battle system is pretty typical for the time, which is a good thing. It's a solid representation of the early 90s RPG if that's what you're looking for. Alright, there you go. That's about 25 decent Super Nintendo games under 10 bucks, and a few more if you're willing to spend a bit more. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope you have a great rest of your day.